and by grants from the Chubb Corporation and Gulf and Western Industries Incorporated. Hello. Uh, around the country, probably at this very moment, I'd be willing to bet that thousands of uh, radio stations and jukeboxes and uh, phonographic devices are playing one or both of a couple of hit records by two of the more durable and accomplished figures in the pop music field. And the hits I'm referring to are Nobody Does It Better, Carly Simon, and Handyman, uh, James Taylor. Fortunately, tonight we have something even better than hearing those records, uh, namely the artists who made them. And uh, I think I use the word artist advisedly in this case. Carly Simon and James Taylor together for the first time on television or at least this year sure. certainly in public television for the first time in life is that so have you never been seen publicly uh, together no we, we, we we've, we've uh, done tours occasionally and have recorded tours. two in one oh, television uh, show that yes yeah um, anyway um, it's nice to see you here together particularly because you're married which is uh, one of the old-fashioned things about you I, I've been invited into your home and it's nice to have an old-fashioned, conservative married couple here. If Grant Wood were alive, he would paint the two of you. <laughs> but uh, is there a competitive thing there um, at all? I mean, do you, do you, I noticed no chart in your apartment saying who's up and who's down and whose record is where and so on. We Jane. try to eliminate the gold records and the, and the charts and any news about how the records are doing from, mm -hmm. from the house itself. And we... And we, uh... I was struck by that. I, it's the first time I've been into a gold record home where there was no gold record showing. They all go to the mothers. The mothers of the artistes? Yeah. Yeah. And they display them prominently. Yeah. Uh, James, would it be well to get out of the way at the beginning what you say to the aspiring songwriter whenever I have a guest on who's known as a songwriter performer? There are people who write in and say, or want mail forwarded to you, how do I get started and all of that? And, uh, it's I, a terrible yeah, problem. I, I think it was a lot easier when I started in, 19, uh, in 1968. I started um, with a group here in New York and then I went to England for a while and was picked up by uh, uh, Peter Asher who was working for the Beatles at that point for their uh, Apple record. It's a lot more, the whole business seems to be a lot more uh, uh, saturated now and a lot more sort of uh, stacked, you know. It's, it, it's mm -hmm. more, uh, you see people graduating uh, from business schools in, in, you know, with degrees in pop music and stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, I myself have given lectures at colleges and stuff. It, it seems to be much more um, mapped out. And it's also harder to get, get into, you know. It's not, it's not as easy as it was. I think the only advice is that you just have to keep at it, and if you're very good, uh, it's worth itself. Uh, it's, it's worth its own while, and then um, beyond that, sooner or later, someone picks up on it and enjoys it, you know, hopefully. Were you an English major? Uh, no. Uh, what, where? In college? Well, yeah, I knew you went to... Uh, well, I, I, went to, I never, I never uh, went to college, went but to I... went to military school at one point, <laughs> and... Uh, right, no, I, I, and I was uh, just a student, yeah. just a preparatory student. Yeah. They didn't major where you were. No, not, not, not as such. Because I read that you had a, a penchant for metaphor or something in your English classes. And um, uh, is it good for a kid who wants to go into the business to study um, any particular thing like that? Composition, English? I really don't know. You see, I thought I was going to be a chemist um, all along. And uh, it was just at the last moment that I sort of uh, came about and switched yeah. tack and, and went uh, and turned totally uh, left. and. Went to New York, you know. Do you two write every... Apparently. Have you noticed James's elocution, though? He, his diction is quite fine. His diction. There, there, there have been disc jockeys who have, who have af, after James's song has been on, they say that James should have been an, an English professor because he mm -hmm. always says, A, A book, A... And always in, in his songs, he says, The secret of life is enjoying the passing of time. Oh, I'm sorry if I, if I gave anything away, but... But he 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 speaks we'll as as an old as an old English 
professor. An old school. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, why is that? Um, have you cultivated that, or were you born with it? I don't know. I guess it's uh, either uh, environmental or hereditary, one or the other. Mm. But, but your mom and your Everybody dad don't, don't speak like that. No? I've never heard them say that. He doesn't sound affected, though, does he? Just distinguished. I think so. I, I, I mean, I, I love it in the house. I like the Thanks for getting this. <laughs> I like the children to be influenced by the, man the be. and A. Yeah, yeah. I think... Um, I'm, I've always been fascinated by the subject of stage fright, having been a victim of it myself. And you're probably known in the business as the queen of stage fright, among other reputations you have for Thank being a fine you. performer, that you simply have gotten out on stage where it's used, supposed to be all right once you get out there, and you tell me, no, it isn't. It's just as bad as I expected it would be. Uh, do you have any symptoms at this moment? Because I can't detect any. That's, that's the thing. I think I'd probably be a better actress than, than I am a singer, perhaps, because I can act. I can act like I'm feeling okay when I'm feeling absolutely terribly. Mm -hmm. I mean, like right now I'm thinking, I'm thinking, is there, is there a bridge or near, near, near this area? <laughs> For jumping purposes? <laughs> jumping. <laughs> yeah, we keep one backstage. There's a tunnel. <laughs> yes. Is there a large vial of pills under the chair? <laughs> yeah, we fasten a seatbelt on you. You won't <laughs> notice it until you try to get up. James, would you say a word about drugs? It's an obligatory subject with you and maybe a painful one. But um, I often had, you know, all through the 60s, I had everybody on the shows, Janice and the airplane and everyone, and I occasionally tried to get them to say something anti-drug. I was frankly after that. They rarely would. Um, most of them, two of them are dead now. Uh, you want anti-drug? I'll give you No, I... Well, I, I don't mean no, to be that bald about right, it. No, it, I mean, it's, uh, it's true that uh, a lot is... See, I, 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 I'm reluctant to, to, uh, to go into it in any detail and at any length again because I feel that uh, it's sort of a sensationalist, you know, mm -hmm. atta attack that, um, that the press and, and, uh, and the media has sort of taken with me, finding nothing else particularly exciting to talk about. They settle on that, and, and I, willing to go to any lengths to uh, um, accommodate them, have talked uh, endlessly and rattled and prattled on about my my problems with drug abuse and addiction. Um, but I guess it, and, and I, I feel badly about this because I feel that, that as, you know, a public figure, uh, I might be condoning it and I might be, uh, I might be encouraging it somehow, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel uh, that I, 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 I've wasted a lot of time uh, on drugs, you know, and I feel that one of the things that bothers me most about uh, about the whole myth uh, is that, that uh, for instance, when a, when a kid is uh, interested in drugs by, by hanging around with his cronies and getting into it and getting next to it, he, he, it's often because uh, somehow it, it looks like some, the, the person who's uh, touting it or the f f person who's introducing him to, to some s form of abuse is, has uh, access to some adventurous kind of uh, experience, you know, mm -hmm. and, and somehow is, is, uh, is knowledgeable and experienced in some area. Whereas, in fact, it's been my experience that drugs are just a waste of time, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just dead time. They're gone. There's nothing to be, there's nothing to be learned from them, you know. And if you had may as well just go to sleep. You'd rather have those years back if you could do it over. I, I sure would, yeah. And I, I also would, would rather not have the history of drug abuse. I wouldn't. I, I don't know what, it, what it's done to my body, but they find out more and more, you know. Yeah. The thing, um, I, I, I was just thinking about the subject, and one thing that drugs do is, is they kind of break down the barrier that's tense between, between people. People want to feel as comfortable as they possibly can in human relations. And if you take drugs, it sort of makes you feel like more, more at ease with your, with your friends. Mm -hmm. but, in, but in fact, there's a certain thing to be gained from feeling tense with your friends mm -hmm. because you because if 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 you break it down then from that point then you're really getting to know each other if you break it down with the with the help of drugs you're not sort of seeing who you are or who the other person is yeah sure yeah on the drug you encounter the drug and then without it you encounter the friend perhaps yeah. or you or yourself i mean it's 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 really fear of intimacy you know, with yourself that i think makes you want to get high and also just to imitate the glamorous figures in the music world. James, yeah. as a glamorous figure of the music world, would you do a number for us? I'll do my best. All right.
while he's unfastening and making his way to the podium. Who's picking up? This is a, to a song called uh, The Secret of Light. It's a presumptuous title. lost a buck uh, underestimating the taste of the American public. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Any fool can do it. There ain't nothing to to the top of the hill but since we're on our way down we might as well enjoy the ride the secret of love is in opening up your heart well it's okay to feel afraid don't let that stand in your way, no. Cause anyone knows that love is the only road. And since we're only here for a while, we might as well show some style. Give us a smile. Isn't it a lovely ride? I'll be sliding down, I'll be gliding down, I'll try not to try too hard, it's just a lovely ride. Now the thing about time is that time isn't really real. It's just your point of view. How does it feel for you? Einstein said he could never understand it all. Planets are spinning through space. The smile upon your face. Welcome to the human race. Isn't it a lovely ride? Wish I was sliding down, see me gliding down. Try not to try too hard, it's just a lovely ride. Isn't it a lovely ride? Oh now, babe, sliding down, gliding down. Try not to try too hard, it's just a lovely ride. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Say, he's good, isn't he? Yeah, it's strange that there's no audience. Yes, I, I wanted to clap. And, uh, really? Let's do. There are some people here, as it turns out. James, is the time in your life when you wrote that significant? Uh, it's a recent song. Um, the, what is significant is the is the uh, is is the is um, the A major seventh to the to the uh, B minor seventh. First just, thing I noticed about it. <laughs> I keep playing those changes over and over and over again, and uh, I just throw different songs into them. I've written about five songs in that same mode. It's like a, it's like a, uh, uh, I think it's a hereditary chord chain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. I, I got uh, a little bit out towards the last, the, the last verse there. Didn't I? Where, where I go, oh, now, Ray. Like <laughs> I didn't think you got out. Okay. Should I tell him what you wrote during the number? 
Oh, no. Well, I was just, 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 just suffice to say that I was, I was, I, I really, I was very touched and moved by your performance. Oh, thank you very much. Nice. I was too, by the way, but I'm less demonstrative. <laughs> um, how do you know when a song is coming on like that? Um, do you ever conceive a whole song like Coleridge did Kublai Khan or something supposedly in one stroke, or do you yes, work that away? Yes, that was one sh one shot. Yeah. Except the verse about Einstein, which is a little from the outside. But you sat down and wrote it out in a no, sitting? No, it was, uh, it, I sat down and sang it. Sang it out. And then I told him about Einstein. Oh, I see. The educated member of the family. He'd never heard, heard of him before. <laughs> Did she hold it over you that she went to college? Um, <laughs> well, it's, uh, never, not in so many specific words. He never comes right out and says it, but I, I hold myself under it. You know? I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting to pull it out when I need it. Yeah. It's Carly, as the unattractive daughter in your family. Thank you. I, I ran Thank across you for the most me touching that. remark. <laughs> hey, come on, baby. I Let's can't blow it. And in, in uh, I think it's in, in current biography, you were quoted as saying that you were the unattractive daughter. The obvious question being, if you are, then where can we find your sisters and let's have a look at them? Although I, I, do I know, can't remember but saying that. The, but the I, fact that people would consider you unattractive, and this is going to sound fulsome, of course, is to me uh, like saying that um, Niagara Falls is uh, not wet. What, what is it that, uh, that, that, well, never mind. Let, bloody just, moist, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I think it's nice for people to know that someone who is as envied, probably, as you are, uh, feels that there are certain things um, uh, undesirable. Yeah. Well, it's true that I that I have two beautiful old, older sisters who were always touted for their looks and were always shown off by my by, by my parents for their talent and their looks and so forth. And 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 I, being younger and always seeming to go through an awkward phase, would you know come out very very kind of gawky and with strange teeth jutting out at weird places or no teeth at all or whatever. And in fact, Sloan Wilson wrote in his recent autobiography or whatever he said all all the Simons were such beautiful people except for Carly the homely one who later became a folk singer who is this Sloan Wilson yes. <laughs> he wrote the man in the gray flannel suit Do you yes know? yeah I know so I I mean people tend to believe I think bad criticism about them rather than the good stuff that's said yes I wonder you... where that is yeah uh, although I don't believe the good um particularly, uh, or the bad, but yes, the bad has a ring of authenticity about it It somehow. brings you right back to zero. Mm -hmm. Like if, I mean, if people have been telling you that you're wonderful and that they like your music and so forth, all you have to hear is one thing, she shouldn't have sung that, that song at the end of her show, mm -hmm. and you're just back to zero. Did you ever uh, have an experience comparable to this? And uh, I used to sit with Woody Allen when he was beginning his club act, and he'd hear people filing out saying, the guitar player was wonderful, but ugh, that comedian. Mm. And he had the courage to go right back on stage. And I used to see you down in the bitter end in those places. Did the audience come in? I was ever the get one that said that about Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That, that can't be true. It's not true. I, I used to sit there faithfully for both you and for Woody. I know. I'm touched. But what do you think the roots of stage fright are? They used to say in a book I read as a kid about acting, if you are nervous, try and think why you're nervous. It sounds like Richard Nixon. And then that will help you to go on. Um, have you ever tried to think why you were nervous and then had it dissolve? I've never had it dissolve, but I've thought a good deal about why it exists. Yeah. It's gotten soft a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> it never dissolved, though. I think I... She's, I she's think, great on stage. I, I think that, that she, she's, she's suffering under the misconception that, she, that, that, that uh, nobody else feels the way she does, but I think mm -hmm. everyone who feels stage fright feels often feels as bad, badly as you do. I think that Carly just won't allow herself uh, to feel too bad, which is a terrific thing, you know. <laughs> Have you never thought of... Or you could she call won't. me a spoiled brat. That no, would no, that, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to imply that at all. I, I, I mean that she's buoyant, you know. She won't let herself sink. Sink. And she, yeah, yeah sink. Yeah. Um, have you, well, ever ne have you never on stage just thought, Lord, this is a wonderful way to make a living. I'm having a great time. The audience is enjoying what I'm doing. I had that in the play I'm in, or was in, depending on when this, you know, am in, uh, the other night I just thought it was going peculiarly well, and I thought, isn't this wonderful, we're doing this thing and the audience is loving it, what a great way to make a living, it doesn't happen every night, of course. You never have that experience? I remember once, once having it, and 
the thought of having a positive emotion on stage so shocked me. <laughs> Did you plunge it into gloom? <laughs> into fear and anxiety. You're your own worst something or other. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that a mystic predicted the success of your current hit? Well, um, or is that press agent no, flaggery? That's a very no. I I I, tru I truly believe in 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 all of that mysticism. It was Gene Dixon and in the predictions for the 1977 year among the... In the January uh, uh, edition of the Midnight Star or whatever. The what? Star. It was actually, it was... In Inquirer? Yeah. Mm. It, was, it was syndicated, though. She said, she said that my biggest success this year would be singing another person's song. And, I, and, and, and I've really thought about that a lot over the year. I've, I've thought, did she actually sort of get up my energies to sort mm -hmm. of look for another person's song to sing and I would damn well make it successful. self-fulfilling prophecy. That's the word I was looking for. Or did she, or did, or, or does she actually know something? Mm. Another she person's know nothing song. At... Is that how she, what did you say, Jim? Or, did she, or does she in fact know nothing at all? Yeah, I, my guess is she knows nothing at all. Um, and I completely scoff at what she does. And yet once in New York, I saw her get on an elevator and I got on and then she looked odd and got off. And so I got off. <laughs> and I just figured, I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> Nothing happened, of course, but I suppose she misses every so often, too. Well, she probably forgotten her keys or something. Something innocuous. <laughs> you ever forget your key on... Never mind. Uh, how did she phrase it? Another person's song? Yes. She mm -hmm. said that my greatest success would be singing another person's song and that I would find the meaning to true happiness. Now, I don't know whether those two were linked, linked together or whether, whether I'd find the meaning to true happiness. By listening, perhaps, to James' song that he just did. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Or by looking at your astonishing tie. What's astonishing about it, exactly? The way it matches your suit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the astonishing thing is any connection between that tie and true happiness. <laughs> if I made you and Joplin and criticizing your garb. Yes, Janis Joplin didn't like my shoes, and now I'm... My funny suits seem to be the sport of this hour. Who does choose your wardrobe for you? Uh, Ray Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll just leave that at that and let the mail pour in, shall I? No. Uh, <laughs> that goes. Edit right There was here. A, bit of, a bit of flashing here. Now, Ray's a dear friend of mine, and we'll certainly understand. Uh, James, is it true that the woman to whom you're married identified with the horse who panicked at the second gate? When Secretariat won the Triple Crown. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm not sure if it was the Derby or the, or or a, one of the subsequent races in the in the three. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, she does that. She she cried. She's terribly emotional. There was one Very horse romantic. that panicked and went in the wrong direction, yeah, and, that, and that was me. And you knew that that was you. Yes. That's quite touching, I find. She can't Scoop. stand it to uh, see uh, any any form of competition where someone wins for that reason, or at least get involved in it. Because someone always loses and it bothers her terribly. It's harrowing. Yeah. And you never see yourself as the front runner who uh, brings home the bacon. Well, if I do, I see the back runners clearly too, and I and I start to feel very sorry for them. Carly, where did I meet you at Groucho's house? Why? I never asked how you happened to be there. Were you a friend of Groucho's? I didn't know Groucho the evening that we met there. I knew uh, I knew a friend of his who invited me there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Bud, We're not... Bud Court. Oh, yes. Because you occasionally say things that are Groucho-esque. Um, I think everyone in America does some, some, to some extent because he was such a dominant influence. But the other day I said to you, you're not one of those people who thinks that, uh, oh, something, that uh, hot water boils slower than cold water. And you said, I'm not one of those people who thinks. <laughs> and um, that, that's a Groucho construction. And so I gather you've been influenced somewhat by him. Uh, well, Groucho, Groucho kind of put himself down in a in a in a very charming way mm -hmm. without overdoing it in fact there was an article uh, recently in the in the new york times about groucho versus the versus chevy chase and the people on the saturday night show which i felt was terribly unfair to the people on the saturday night show i didn't see that so i can't take sides although i'm certainly willing to however i have the urgent duty to duty i understand the duty to ask you if you would do something even at these non-prices uh, the two of you out of affection for our old days in Nebraska together. We, we, we have a song which, which we um, 
which which we're just learning, which is an old Everly Brothers song. Oh, good. Yeah. I tell you what, you you have to unhitch the uh, yourselves yeah, and, and get over, over there, and um, because our, the arms of our chair make it difficult to sing. Which sounds strange. Meanwhile, I'll cleverly fill the time by explaining to the audience how these interesting microphones clip on and off, and as soon as you're ready, you'll just give me the high sign. Everly Brothers, you say. I, I, don't, I don't know who wrote it, but it was, it was made famous by the Everly Brothers. too heavy a burden on you. Why don't you come over here and join me for the end? Um, thank you for... It's people like you who, who give marriage and success a good name or something fulsome like that. Thank you for coming here. This has been most enjoyable. I wish we had more time. And giving the show a little class. It was just wonderful. You two really have it. See you next thank time. Thank you.